This is Closer to the Fire from the Voice of the Martyrs Canada, with a focus on the persecuted church around the world. I'm Greg Musselman. Our focus on this program is India, which is a diverse democratic country with religious equality enshrined into the law. But in 2023, in many states, it can be a terrifying place to be a follower of Jesus. In recent years, there's been a big increase in Hindutva, an ideology that believes only Hindus are true Indians and that Christians, Muslims and other religious minorities have foreign roots and must be expelled. Hindu extremists seem to attack others with impunity, even using extreme violence in some parts of the country. Increasing numbers of states are implementing anti-conversion laws. Now, these are supposed to stop Hindus from being forcibly converted to other religions. But in reality, they're often used as an excuse to harass and intimidate Christians who are doing things like distributing aid, you know, showing kindness to the poor and helping those that are struggling, or even having private church meetings. Now, these laws do not seem to protect Christians from being coerced back into Hinduism. Well, joining me to talk about the situation in advocating for the rights and protection for the followers of Jesus is a longtime Voice of the Martyrs Canada partner, Ramshan Serenu. Now, he's a Christian leader in central India, and he helped bring children and the elderly of persecuted families from Orissa, known now as Odisha. That was an eastern state on the Bay of Bengal. That was back in 2008 to Indore, which is in the state of Madhra Pradesh. Now, according to government reports, the 2008 violence resulted in at least 39 Christians being killed, but the unofficial reports are saying that as many as 500 were killed and over 3,900 Christian homes were completely destroyed and almost 400 churches were razed or burned down and over 600 villages were ransacked and more than 60,000 and even as many as 75,000 were left homeless. Ramshan joins me from indoor along with Sashil George, and he's the director of the Sui Juris Law Firm. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me on Closer to the Fire. Thank you. Now, Ramshan, before we talk about uh, the important advocacy work and why we need to be helping our brothers and sisters in the legal process, uh, and again, the abuse of this anti-conversion law, which continues to be implemented in many more states, as I mentioned, you helped to bring children from Orissa, again known as Odisha, to Indoor. That was some 15 years ago. Uh, about 130 children along with 100 elderly. How are things going now and uh, how have these children now, many of them adults, uh, doing after all these years? Uh, the most of the children out of 130, they have completed their education and many of them are back into Varista state. Uh, we still have uh, 25 uh, children from Orissa from that persecution. They are doing BSc nursing, BS nursing, and also engineering and other courses. And uh, out of 25, seven are going to complete their BS nursing uh, by June this year. And the uh, rest of them are continuing to complete uh, BS nursing and other courses in the university in Indo. Then most of them, they are persecuted, but not defeated. Actually, they get a opportunity to study up to the university level degrees. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a good thing that out of all the bad things that happened in 2008. Yeah, I know. And I've had the opportunity to, you know, to see the children a number of years ago and and, you know, then to see, you know, recent video and photos of these uh, and now young adults, uh, they're doing very, very well. And uh, and I know their faith has been strong and some are even serving in ministry. So, you know, it's very exciting to see what God is doing now. Sashil, um, again, thank you for being on Closer to the Fire. Nice to meet you for the first time. Explain to me about this law firm that has been started. Uh, you're involved and uh, Ramshan is involved and you have others and lawyers that are getting involved in some of these situations. But tell me how the law firm came about and what the vision and goal is. After the COVID incidents, uh, the situation got worse in India uh, and a new act was being implemented in 2020-21. And there were so many cases, persecution cases, which were coming up. So my friend Rajesh Joshi and myself, with the support of Brother Ramchand, uh, we started a law firm named Sui Juris Law Firm in October 2021. 
And uh, this is just uh, one and a half years now the law firm has started. And uh, till now we have uh, provided 31 persons who were being persecuted, they were in jail. We provided bail to them. And uh, seven of the accused person, they have been acquitted from the the case also, false cases. Why were they in prison then? I mean, we talk about, you know, persecuted Christians being, uh, you know, locked up and, you know, these anti-conversion laws and that. Um, but, I mean, persecution is kind of a broad term. So what are some of the specific things that happened and why were they imprisoned? After the new government which has come, it's, uh, they are... Um, they are stopping all the Christian uh, activities in the place places and uh, 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 people, those who are gathering for worship, uh, mob lynching take place. Uh, a lot of mob, fanatic mobs, they come and they attack and they, uh, they charge a false case uh, under the new act. And uh, they are being, uh, that's a non-bailable offense and uh, they have to go to jail. It's available often, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for us, uh, you know, in Canada and the Western world, uh, you know, to, to think of false charges just being brought. Of course, our legal system, uh, you know, has a lot of holes in it too. But this is blatant, Ramshan. Uh, is it getting worse because of these anti-conversion laws now? The, the recent amendments that happened in the anti-conversion law in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh, there are the persecution number is very increased because there are few things that was added into the new anti-conversion law and a lot of fanatic groups are using those points to file a cases against the Christians. So Sihil, in January 2021, uh, a new law came into effect and you describe this as a draconian law, the Anti-Conversion Act, and it came into force. So what is the goal of this law? Uh, the act says that uh, no conversion can be taken through allurement, coercion, force, uh, fraudulent, or undue influence. Uh, and uh, a aggrieved person, they can um, charge a false case against a person, and a blood he should be a blood relative. He can file a false case. But most of the cases means the persons are being planted and they are unknown persons, they go and they registered a case against the Christians. Do the authorities realize that these are just, in many cases, just uh, false charges? Yes, all the authorities, they know that these are all false cases. And so they blatantly, you know, use these laws then, uh, Ramshed, to go after the Christians? Exactly, because most of the authorities, they know these are all the false charges, but because of the political pressure, uh, they are actually not able to do anything other than filing cases against the Christians. And surprisingly, not even a one conviction, false conversion conviction case uh, is happened in India. Not even one case, one conviction case was also not happened in India for all these years. Now that I find very interesting that uh, these, they're, they're all false and that's just uh, the reality. Uh, how is that then affecting evangelism, uh, you know, sharing the gospel or or doing humanitarian work, Ramshad? And, 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 because you want to show the love of Jesus and obviously this is making it more difficult. Exactly, because uh, we have changed the way of uh, doing things right now and uh, we are gathering in a small groups in different locations. Even if we are doing a charity work and uh, we, were, we are very careful now than before because any false charges can be uh, filed and then we can send to be jail also. So it's quite a difficult situation. I've been living in Indo for past 26 years, but uh, for the last two years, it's very, very difficult situations for us, and not only for us, but for many other Christians in the state and in Uttar Pradesh as well. Now, Ramshad, let's explain then, because 
maybe some folks are saying, okay, well, you know, we shouldn't forcibly convert anybody. Uh, we shouldn't put any pressure on. I think we would all go and say, you know, proselytizing people. That's We don't believe in that. You know, to come to Jesus, it's free will. You know, he makes salvation open to whoever wants to accept him. We present the gospel. It's up to the Holy Spirit to do the work. So we can agree on that. But with these anti-conversion laws, it appears that any Hindu that becomes a Christian, regardless if it's their own free choice, if they, you know, they went into a church, they heard the message and they respond, well, that's considered coercion because they're responding to this. Or if you show kindness by, you know, giving food or aid or clothing, uh, you know, to help people that are in need and they say, hey, I I, I want to be a part of this. I want to have a relationship with Jesus. So anything, anytime a person converts from Hinduism to Christianity, it's seen as uh, anti-conversion. So how do you help, you know, your friends in India and those that are following Jesus to present the gospel and uh, not be intimidated? Yeah, that's a, that's a quite difficult situation, as I already mentioned, for the past two years. And uh, right now, most of the like is uh, the the pastors they are gathering in the mainly in the zoom zoom meetings and uh, they're sharing the gospel and uh, they're praying for the people and even uh, for the believers to meet as a group on sunday services also became very difficult situation and most of the churches they were gathering in the schools and colleges but uh, now the schools and colleges also not giving a space for these people to come and meet and most of the churches who do not have the own place they're actually gathering in a small groups or in a zoom meeting what are western countries like canada are they putting any kind of pressure on the Indian government to, because already their constitution, their laws say there is freedom of religion, but in reality, that's not happening. It's well known that these things are going on in India. So, Sashil, is there any response from other countries trying to put pressure on India to say, look, you need to have these laws that you have on, you know, on the books that they need to be adhered to? Yes, there are a lot of international pressure uh, um, on the government, uh, uh, which they are uh, meeting against the minority Christians, and uh, uh, but uh, they are not means uh, the government is not uh, taking much attention uh, on the on these uh, pressures, but there are pressures uh, international pressures on the Indian government. So would you recommend then that uh, Christians in Canada talk to their members of parliament about what's going on in India and, and putting pressure on the government? Yes, there should be a pressure from all the countries uh, to the government. Yeah, because if we don't uh, do something, uh, these you know things will continue to go on. Yeah, so we need to you know continue to shine light on it. Uh, so let's look at some of the cases uh, of anti -con this anti conversion law being used against Christians. And I know there are so many. And at the Voice of the Martyrs, we have what's called the persecution and prayer alert, which comes out every week. Uh, you know, praying for persecuted Christians around the world, and so many of the stories that uh, we're following, uh, you know, involve Christians in India that are being arrested under these anti-conversion laws, and, you know, we've seen so much violence as well, and I mean, this is just a part of all the pressure that's being put on Christians, you know, that we talked about the violence, uh, then you've got the whole uh, legal side of it, and that's why I wanted to talk to you guys about this, because, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, responses to persecution, Christians, they fortify, meaning they can't leave, they have to stay. Uh, others will flee. And again, we see biblical examples of this from the book of Acts with Paul. Uh, he fled, you know, from one area to another. And then there's also the fighting part of it, and not in a physical way, but through the courts. We also see that from Paul's reaction, you know, as a Roman citizen in the Bible. So that's a totally legitimate way of doing it. So let's look, though, at some of these cases, uh, you know, that are happening. Uh, going back to January 2021, 11 believers were arrested, including a pregnant woman uh, with a three-year-old minor. Uh, so she'll tell me about that particular case and what the outcome was. Uh, that was the first case after the act was started. Act was implemented in uh, 2021. And in the same month, in the month of January 26th, uh, January, 
um, uh, 11 people were being arrested, including a pregnant woman and child, and they were uh, in jail for 77 days. So that was a pretty long time. And we were very much worried that um, uh, they were not getting the bail because it was the first case uh, 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 which, uh, which happened in Madhya Pradesh. And uh, from there only, we, we thought to start a sui juris law firm. And we started thinking seriously of starting sui juris law firm. And in the month of October, we started the work uh for the for for the persecution cases so Ramshad, i know that was a big part of uh, you know what you got behind in terms of starting this law firm and again you've worked in you know with the persecuted church for a long time we talked about you know the children and the uh elderly that uh, that you brought into indoor from orissa odisha state and uh and you know working you know helping people that are struggling you know with food and and supplies and encouragement and all the rest of the things evangelism of course which now the Indian government looks down as being proselytizing. And of course, uh, we'll just continue to preach the gospel. I know you'll do that. But why did you really feel that you needed to do something, uh, getting a law firm together? Uh, because, I mean, that's a little bit different of some of the things that you've been doing. I think one of the main reasons is uh, the Bible very clearly says, seek justice and defend the oppressed. And uh, it's not like persecution is normal. We can pray and we can pray for the people. Bible is also saying, seek justice, defend the oppressed. So that's really an encouragement, uh, a kind of a passion for us to see the justice to happen to these persecuted Christians and also defend all this because they're all oppressed, because they have no voice. And uh, that's why we have uh, initiated this law form and to help as many as we can the persecuted christians around us what has the reaction then been from the authorities the indian government uh, not only where you are in central india but i'm sure even outside of the state because i mean if as you're having success i'm, I'm sure that you know other uh, christian organizations are going to also want to do something similar so what's the reaction been from the indian authorities uh, see some of the the agencies from government they continue to visit us now they visited Shushil office and they have continuously visiting my office today they called three times and yesterday we were together so they were just trying to create a fear on us so that we will also be fearful with uh, they talk nicely but they, then they indirectly they are saying we know what you guys are doing so it's kind of creating a fear on the people who are working for the persecuted Christian. So they're trying their level best to stop what we have been doing and what we are doing right now. What do some of the intimidations look like? Do they say they're they're going to shut you down or if you don't cooperate, uh, there could be trouble again? You say they're, they're trying to be nice about it, but uh, you know that they don't want this to continue. Uh, see, they, they talk nicely. They, they will not uh, give any threat to us directly because uh, they know the, uh, when they go to the Shushil and Rajesh, uh, they are the advocates. And when they come to me, they talk nicely. But they try to tell that whatever you guys are doing, we know. And whatever others are doing, we know. So just uh, creating a kind of a, a fear on the people. But we are not fearful. But if we take a general uh, pastor, a Christian believer, then they may get scared. Their phones are tapped and their uh, social uh, communication is leaked. So they may be a bit scared. So Ramshan, what is uh, the uh, response been from Christians uh, in indoor and and in the state of Madhya Pradesh and and beyond are they are they supportive of what you're doing? Yeah, they're quite supportive. Like what uh, Shushil said, this when they started a sui juris law form, uh, they were initially uh, were not very much supportive. But now they have seen this law form is uh, helping many persecuted. Christians to get bails and uh, giving a kind of a comfort and visiting them. And 
it's a quite a bit support right now uh, what we have been doing here. So, Sheila, let's talk in, um, another case that uh, that I found very interesting, where a CC camera was actually used to protect a believer by the name of Rai Singh. Uh, he is a 57-year-old Christian worker. Uh, tell me how that camera helped in that situation. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, uh, daily a police person used to visit his house, and he used to threaten uh, uh, Pastor Rai Singh. Uh, that you should stop uh, the prayer service every Sunday. And then uh, Pastor Ray Singh, he consulted our lawyer, Ra Rajesh Joshi. And uh, our lawyer told him that you install a CCC camera uh, so that you, you can get an evidence. So after installing CCC camera, means uh, the police have stopped coming and threatening uh, uh, the pastor and the prayer is going on. Is this a part of maybe the strategy uh, that your law firm and that other Christians should have is to make sure that the things that are happening to them are not happening in secret where nobody is noticing? Yes, with the CCC camera is important for the evidence. Uh, if somebody attacks us, then uh, the CCC camera can give the entire uh, uh entire situation that what has happened but still there there are a lot of believers who are praying in secret but we are telling them that install ccc camera so that will be safe evidence for them now we on this program here uh closer to the fire and also on our voice of the martyrs website and social media uh, we've had stories where we have shown video from india even in a police station where the believers are beaten uh, and nothing happens. So we know that, yes, it's good to have a CC camera and to, you know, video when we can, but we've seen so many incidents where video and social media is actually used to intimidate Christians. Um, how can we help our brothers and sisters that are facing those situations? Because they go to the police station and they're beaten up or they go to the police station after their church is attacked and nothing is done. How then do we and your your organization then help uh, those that are suffering in that way? Uh, we go, uh, we have also uh, witnessed that one uh, police torture uh, case had taken place yeah. uh, nearby in Daw, and uh, we approached the court and we gave the evidence to the court, and uh, the court had taken uh, action for that so any uh, police atrocity takes place we approach the court and the court uh, gives the direction are you seeing more of a positive response then from the court when you bring all this evidence to them um it is a 50 50 percent response the the judiciary uh, has to follow the constitution but uh, because of the legislative pressure they uh, sometimes they are under the pressure of the government also but as per the law they have to follow the constitu constitution so uh, sometimes they give justice to us when we provide evidences uh, to them so they provide justice to us in some ways i guess 50 50 in terms of you know success in the courts uh, can be discouraging in some ways but encouraging the fact that before nothing was really being done in a lot of these cases and they were just being ignored and believers were put into prison and uh, you know their attackers there was no justice there but do you see ramshan things improving in a greater way in the future in the midst of all these anti-conversion laws not only where you are but in the other states in india uh, by observing the last two years incident, persecution incident in Madhya Pradesh and different parts of North India, we do not have much hope that things will get better in future. Actually, the things can go more worse if the government is not going to stop all these fanatic groups doing these things. I have sent a video uh, about one of the 
persecution event that happened in uh, Indore in 2015. Mm -hmm. And there's a big mob of uh, this uh, fanatic groups entered inside the church mm -hmm. and uh, with, the, with a large number of police abused the woman by pouring the water on their face, mm -hmm. beaten the pastors. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after doing all these things, they filed uh, uh, false cases against the pastors who are in that meeting. Mm -hmm. And we have all this video footage and videos, everything we have submitted to the police to file a fire on the main guy who is who actually created this violence. But not even a, the police response was zero, means they, they are not at all willing to file any FIR or the case against the guys who created this. And uh, finally, we approached uh, the local court uh, with all these evidences. And uh, after many months, after six months of this incident happened, they just one small file, uh, small uh, uh, case was filed against the guy who created this mess. And there is no conviction so far. And uh, the case is still going on even after eight years. With this kind of uh, incident that's happening around us, uh, we do not have much hope that things will get better in future uh, unless the government takes a strong action against this kind of events, the human rights violations that is happening almost every day uh, now in northern part of India and even some parts of South India as well. How does this affect then, Ramshand, uh, the Christians in India? Uh, are they feeling fearful uh, or or do they understand that the Bible does talk about, you know, suffering for your faith and, you know, the kingdom of God suffers violence? Again, that's hard for maybe North American Christians or living here in Canada to understand, but that's the daily reality. Uh, so how is that affecting overall the church? I know there's some that would be more fearful and some that would be going, no matter what they do, we're staying here, we're going to tell people about Jesus. But but overall, how is that affecting the body of Christ, uh, you know, in your part of India? Uh, most of the Christians that know the scripture well, and they understand the persecution is part of uh, uh, part of what is already written in the Bible and they need to be strong and they need to stand for Christ during these trials. And uh, there are some Christians who are not well versed with the Bible and the scripture and uh, they are kind of a bit fearful and even some of them are actually joining with the fanatic groups. That's kind of a very sad thing that is happening in not all the places but some places in India. Yeah, and I understand it. Um, fear does a lot of strange things to people. And I guess, again, a big part of your ministries need to be, and in, in, in the churches there uh, need to be teaching our brothers and sisters in Christ the you know, the cost to follow Christ and uh, in, and to understand that these things are going to happen. But again, they're, they're only human and they have families and, and they don't want to put their families at risk. And we understand that and before we close this program off today, we're going to spend some time in prayer. But uh, Shishiyas, tell me some of the things that are going on, some of the, the current stories that are happening uh, that we need to be praying for in, this, in situations where our brothers and sisters are suffering. Just recently, uh, two people were being arrested. One pastor, uh, Chris Norm, uh, he was having a prayer meeting. He was having a birthday party and a prayer meeting at one of the uh, uh, villages. And there the uh, the fanatic mob, they attacked them and he was in uh, jail for 21 days. And uh, one young boy, he is just 21 years old. His name is Rahul Jadav. And he uh, knew about Christ through the social media, through the uh, messages he was uh, going through the YouTube and uh, his family uh, accepted Christ uh, through the social media platform. And he was uh, sharing the gospel to uh, their relative. He came to Indore and uh, near the village, he was uh, having a prayer meeting at his home with his family member. And there the uh, uh, somebody informed that there is a uh, Christians are have come here from outside and they are praying and they came and they attacked him. And he was also in jail for, he was in police custody for 48 hours. 
means mm. but as per the rule only uh, you can put uh, a person in police custody in 20 for only 24 hours and you have to produce uh, before the court within 24 hours but he was in uh, the police custody for 48 hours and we were uh, we got the information that uh, he has been uh, taken in the police custody and uh, through the court intervention within 2 days uh, we released him on bail so uh, the situation is very worse especially in uh, the rural area also and in uh, cities uh, wherever there is a prayer going on if somebody gives a, a tip that uh, uh, there is a somebody has come and christians are having a prayer so immediately they turn that situation into a conversion issue and uh, false charges are been made and uh, the person is uh, 100% uh, has been thrown in in the jail but uh, through our intervention all the cases which we have received we have provided bail to all the christians where whatever cases we we took uh, we have obtain bail from them and uh, some of the cases even uh, we have got the acquittal also from false charges how does that work then if uh, you hear of a case where there has been you know christians have been charged under the anti conversion law they're imprisoned um how does it work then so you hear the story uh you know the situation going on do you approach uh the believer or believers that are under these charges and say that you're willing to help is that is that kind of how it works uh, shahil uh, uh thanks to the social media because of the whatsapp uh, groups and all immediately uh, alert messages comes to different believers that uh, there is a arrest has been taken place and uh, immediately when the uh, the information reach reaches our office then our lawyers they immediately call the near the uh, concerned police station and uh, they start uh, uh, talking to the police that uh, this case has come whenever you are producing the person in the court that that time we should be informed so that uh, as a lawyer we can stand uh, for for them so how does it then work Uh, in terms of the financial side of it if you know if i run into trouble even if it's my fault i have to hire a lawyer uh so how does it work then you approach the believers and uh, you do it pro bono you don't charge or how how does that all work and and how are you supported because you have lawyers working with you and they're professional people uh, yes we are struggling but uh, some of the believers they support us Uh, the recent person uh, named rahul jadhav uh, he's uh, he's from a very poor family and uh, when he was been uh, arrested then you have to pay some security deposit and they didn't have any money so we raised the uh, money and then we supported them so for when a person is arrested that that's a very hectic time for us our whole team works for uh, 24 hours day and night and we see that the person is released so for four five days it will it is a tough time for us to uh, work uh, we have to go to the police station we have to go to the courts and uh, we have to do lot of documentation work to release a person so it's a challenging work but uh, god is giving strength to us Yeah, it, it's amazing. So, Ramshan, uh, with the lawyers that are working for you, uh, tell me about some of the people that you have uh, on your team to be helping these persecuted brothers and sisters. Because again, they're not going to be paid what they normally would be used to. Uh, they're making sacrifices. Uh, they must be some pretty amazing people that you're working with. Yeah, I think that's a big challenge. Uh, so for past one year, uh, when Shushil and uh, when this initiate uh, initiative was started, uh, we were trying to bring the donations from different places to help for past twelve months. And uh, for the last three months, they are going through a quite challenge, and. Uh, it's very difficult to hire a, a professional lawyer to stand in the high court and fight for a case and what we have been encouraging is uh, some pastors they are capable to pay some fees uh, when they get arrested 
So we we have decided, uh, Shushil and myself and Rajesh, uh, if a church pastor and the believers are able to pay something, you charge a bit. And if a person is not able to pay anything, you help that person and get a bail and trust the Lord and inform the believers around you so that uh, we are uh, we are moving forward instead of leaving a poor man to be in the jail for a long term. Now, we talked earlier, Ramchat, about uh, how this, uh, you know, these anti-conversion laws are affecting Christians. How is it uh, impacting the work of true evangelism, you know, sharing the message of Jesus? And I know you're an evangelist by heart. Uh, You've been doing that for many years, sharing the gospel, seeing people come to Jesus. Are people now more resistant, uh, you know, in making that decision to follow Jesus? And are they kind of maybe being more secretive uh, if they do make that, uh, you know, that, you know, life-changing decision to follow Christ. Uh, the surprisingly, what we have been hearing, what we have seen, uh, the number of people coming to the Lord during this past two to three years actually increased, uh, multiplied in double, if I am not wrong. But so we have seen more coming to the Lord uh receiving christ and reading the word for the past two years how would you explain that what <laughs> why is that happening i mean i know the holy spirit is involved i, I will never ever uh you know downplay that anyway but practically speaking uh, why do you think that's happening uh, I think uh, COVID had done a lot of damage and also because of COVID lockdowns, the most of even the, the, the people in the village is also able to uh, go into social media, watch videos. And I think that that one uh, area helped a lot uh, for the word of the Lord to spread through social media. I think many of them have seen, heard the word of God and uh, received Christ. I think that's the gospel is that the word of God is preached through social media because of COVID lockdown. I think that may be a reason. And we have to develop more uh, social media content for the neo-literate people in India that uh, more uh, gospel content uh, uh, should be produced in social media so that uh, the gospel is communicated to the neo-literate people. Uh, community which is larger in India. I know that uh, COVID hit India particularly hard. There was so much death and as it impacted, you know, economies all over the world, India was hit particularly hard. But I guess the silver lining with that and with COVID is that it has, you know, given the church there other opportunities to be able to share the gospel into people's homes through social media. Yes, uh, social media played a very important role in which um, uh, the gospel was being reached out uh, to a lot of people who were suffering uh, of COVID and they were were hunger and they were thirsty. And through the social media, a lot of people, they heard uh, the gospel and through personal evangelism also, uh, they have learned, learned a lot. I don't know, Ramshad, discipleship is a, a big part of uh, what you're about. I know some of your background, we can't get into all the specifics and organizations that you've worked with, but talk about discipleship in terms of new believers in Christ, those that particularly come from Hindu families and are feeling a lot of pressure. See, the, the accepting Christ is uh, one step. And uh, if people are the, the new believers, if they are not reading the Bible and if they don't know the Bible well, uh, when this kind of persecution happened, uh, then people think, uh, my God is not helping me. And he just left me like that. So there, I think discipleship plays a key role. Uh, and it's very important for the pastors and the Christian leaders to make sure whoever is coming to the Lord, make sure they understand the uh, the Bible, the Word of God very clearly. And uh, every believer to know that the persecution is a part of uh, Christian life. It is not like uh, our God is small and he's not helping. And uh, it's a part of life and we have to stand for the justice and defend the oppressed. But at the same time, 
we have to make sure every believer should know these things and it's a part of discipleship and we have been doing it and many of them are also doing now and uh, but that should uh, happen in a, a bigger scale so every person who receives christ need to be discipled properly so that he can continue to follow the lord with all the difficult situations in their lives well the discipleship i think uh, in any context is so important i mean we've got challenges you know we're facing in canada as the church especially evangelical christians are becoming more marginalized and that's why we need to you know be hearing the stories of what's going on in india and that our brothers and sisters are standing strong in the midst of persecution and uh, we need to encourage each other so gentlemen before we go what are some of the things uh we'll start with you ramjad that we should be praying for and that you would appreciate uh those that are living in canada the united states or wherever this podcast is being heard or seen that we can bring before the lord uh, i encourage all of you to continue to pray for the persecuted christians in india and also in other parts of the world uh and a few the prayer requests are very important and uh, pray that uh, during these persecutions believers will have more faith and strength to trust the lord and so that they can continue to live for christ and also pray for uh, sui juris law firm and god to raise many more christians like shashil and rajesh in other parts of north india so they can continue to serve uh, the persecuted christians in different parts of india we need more christian advocates uh, during this difficult time uh, to stand uh, and help the persecuted christians and we will continue to bring the stories from india so people can be praying we have what's called the persecution and prayer alert that comes out weekly and often we are talking about india uh things are getting worse there i'd planned to come uh earlier this year but uh because of some of the challenges we have to be careful we again i don't want to put you guys in uh in any kind of uh more difficult situation than you're already facing but uh we do believe that uh there'll there'll be open doors uh, to be able to continue to develop the relationships and hear the stories of what's going on so shahil what are some of the things that you would like us to be praying for um uh, please pray that the more uh, christian lawyers should be uh, involved in helping the persecuted christians uh like in indore we had initiated so uh, there should be uh, other places also in north india where the lawyers should come and they should help uh, the persecuted christians uh, and bring them uh, provide them bail and they should be acquitted from the cases false charges mm -hmm. so uh, please pray that uh, whenever the persecution it's the god's intervention and in human way it's the lawyer the law, right lawyer he can help us to provide bail and acquit them from the uh, false cases also so uh, the lawyer's role is very critical at the time of uh, persecution which is taking place in india I know advocacy and you know fighting for our brothers and sisters in the legal process has become something that even at Voice of the Martyrs we've got more involved in you know whether it's in China or Sri Lanka uh Pakistan where you have these blasphemy laws it's becoming more and more important that we fight in the legal sense uh, you know for our brothers and sisters and advocating for them because that that seems where the pressure is really starting to come and uh, we need to really be standing in the gap Ramshan before we go to prayer are you getting a uh, feedback uh, from other places in India because i mean again there's so many states now that are under these anti conversion laws are are you getting uh, you know inquiries from uh, believers in other states uh, where this is going on actually there a lot of a uh, lot of my friends in from even other states even from south they are very careful uh some of them are actually very fearful also even to make a phone call and to talk about some of the spiritual things they are very careful right now and also when they are traveling sometimes so all their phones and laptops are checked if any christian information is there and it happened to uh, with two of my friends in the airports and uh, one of them was interrogated for almost 15 hours 
uh, Indian coming to India from Singapore and they have put him in immigration, downloaded all his data in the phone and in the laptop. It was such a, a shameful thing, even though they do not have that kind of authority. So in, at the end of 14 hours, they were not able to find anything. So they left him uh, to go. And this kind of incident creating a fear in many, uh, many Christians, even in the southern part of India as well. Well, the Bible talks about not, you know, fear not. And I think there's like 365 uh, verses in the Bible. But when you're living under it, uh, it's easier said than done. But uh, we do pray. Uh, you know, I know my heart in, in praying for India and many persecuted believers around the world is that they would not be overcome by fear because it's in the fear that we shrink back and we don't share the message of Jesus. And uh, that is in any culture. The gospel of Jesus Christ continues to go forward. We know the Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And it's because the church is on the offensive. And that's what's going on in India. Uh, we're hearing the many amazing reports of people coming to Jesus. So as people are listening or watching, remember that God is on the move in this most populous nation of India that uh, people, because of Sashil and Ramshad, their team, and many other pastors and believers in indoor and beyond, uh, are not shrinking back. They're telling the message of Jesus. And uh, we'll be praying for both you guys in terms of your protection, and I encourage people to do that. Uh, so can you both pray? Maybe Ramshad will start with you, and uh, Shahil, if you can uh, also pray, and uh, we'll join together. Because you know, the most important thing we can do, and I've heard this, uh, uh, you know, when I've been in India and uh, and all over the world, when I come back to Canada, what do you want me to tell your brothers and sisters? They'll say the most important thing is to pray. And then it's out of praying that we take action legally, helping people flee to other places, supporting the persecuted church, Bibles, training, all that. Yes, we believe in that. But it's in prayer as the Holy Spirit then gets a hold of our hearts. So, Ramshad, can you lead us uh, to God's throne in prayer? Sure. Father, we come before you and uh, we pray specifically for the, the persecuted Christians who are struggling uh, during this difficult time, O oh Lord. And uh, we ask you, Lord, you help them and strengthen their faith, give them courage to continue to trust on you and to continue to live for you, o Father. And Lord, also we thank you, Lord, in the midst of all this persecution, you're doing a great, uh, great things. And so many are able to hear and coming to your kingdom. We praise God for that, O Lord. And we pray for the Lord, you raise more Christian advocates uh, to seek justice and uh, uh, defend the oppressed in different parts of northern part of India, Lord, and also in South India and other places. We ask you, Lord, continue to uh, strengthen the persecuted Christian, not only in India and in different parts of the world, O oh Father, and help them, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we come to your feet, O Lord. We praise you, worship you this day, O Lord, Father. We pray, O Lord, Father, that you are the God of justice, O Lord, that we pray especially for this country, India, O Lord, where the persecution has been increased, O Lord, Father. But we know that you are on throne, O Lord, that your righteousness and justice is established, O Lord. We thank thee, O Lord, Father. We pray. We pray for the poor people. We pray for the persecuted people who have been um, in fear, O oh Lord, Father, that provide them strength, O oh Lord, Father, we pray, and uh, protect them, O oh Lord, Father, we pray, and we pray uh, for the uh, uh, law firm, O oh Lord, Father, that uh, all the lawyers, they may be able to help, O oh Lord, the people who have been persecuted, that they may be uh, able to come out from jail, O oh Lord, Father, we pray. We pray, O oh Lord, that your righteousness, justice may be able to be established on this country. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And let me pray for you. Thank you, Lord, for Shahil and also for Ramjad and uh, their, their law firm and all that they're doing uh, in India, uh, in Central India especially, in Madhra Pradesh. And we thank you, Lord, for these faithful brothers. And I pray for protection around them and their families and uh, the lawyers and all those that are advocating uh, for our brothers and sisters that are being falsely accused, imprisoned, and facing violence. 
and uh, Lord, that you would strengthen them. And we've talked a lot about how these uh, anti-conversion laws are used to intimidate uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray, Lord, they would have the opposite effect. They would actually embolden them to be even more passionate and and faithful in sharing the message of Jesus. Father, we know that that is the only hope for India. We know that's the only hope for Canada. Uh, and around the world is the message of your son, Jesus. And we know the enemy puts up many uh, barriers and blockades to try to stop the spread of the gospel. We know because the Holy Spirit is working, that can't happen. But in the midst of this uh, spiritual war, there are many casualties and those that are suffering. And we want to uh, help our brothers and sisters that are suffering. The Bible does tell us that when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. And we want to be there and help our brothers and sisters. And I know sometimes the cases don't always go as we would hope in, in India. But uh, we also know that just the fact that there are those that are willing to uh, stand in the gap and help them, that brings encouragement to our brothers and sisters. And uh, so, Father, we again, thank you for the time that we've had together. Uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, as we have talked, it'll spark even more prayer for India. And uh, the cases that have been mentioned, we bring them to you, Lord. And we just ask that you would work in a powerful way. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers, thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, Shashil, nice meeting you. Ramshad, nice seeing you again. And uh, we'll continue to pray. And with this podcast called Closer to the Fire, uh, we're always encouraging those that are listening or watching uh, to rate it, uh, you know, to give some feedback so more people will find out about what is going on in the world. It's not just, you know, people suffering. And yes, that's a part of what Voice of the Martyrs is about, is telling people about what's going on. But it's encouraging to pray, but also to hear what God's doing in the midst of persecution and suffering. And, you know, we love India. Uh, Canada, of course, has been so blessed by the many uh, Indians that have come to this nation. They've really helped to build this nation. And um, we're just so grateful for that and grateful for you guys. So God bless you and keep up the great work that you're doing in India for God's kingdom. Thank you. Thank you, Bill Greg. Thank you. God bless you guys. And remember, the closer you are to Jesus, the closer you are to the fire. <laughs>